Before we begin today's topic, this video would like to disclaim that it is not in any way sponsored by any company to make any claims regarding their products or against any other products shown in this video. The video is using certain products only as a guide to describe the general characteristics that are shared by other similar products, in this case, oral rehydration products. With the days getting hotter, it is important that we drink enough water to prevent us from being dehydrated. While it seems pretty simple and straightforward, dehydration, if not treated properly, can cause serious effects and even lead to fatalities. But what does it even mean to be hydrated? Is it not just drinking enough water? And if so, why are there so many products out there that claim to help with dehydration when plain water alone is available for us? Hi, I'm Zoe. I've been studying pharmacy for about three to four years now, and today we're going back to basics. I'll be discussing about hydration, dehydration, and also oral rehydration therapy. Because here's the thing, while the concept of dehydration itself is pretty straightforward, treating it, maybe not so much. Here are three questions which I want you to think about while watching this video. Number one, what is the most common cause of dehydration? Number two, what are the ingredients usually seen on oral rehydration products? And number three, what is the correct way out of these three options is the correct way to take oral rehydration salts. So let us start with actually staying hydrated. When you think about being hydrated, you would most probably remember the adage, remember to drink plenty of water every day, or you need to drink six to eight cups of water every day. The latter of the two is also actually mentioned both in the UK's National Health Service website on drinking water and also in Brunei's very own drinking water policy for students, where the same amount is actually recommended for children aged 5 to 12 years old, whereas 13 years and above actually need 8 to 10 glasses. The same water policy that Brunei has also gives the benefits of drinking water and reminding to cut down on sugary drinks. Everyone knows water is important and it is good to see that healthy water intake is being promoted to even students. But then that begs the question, why is dehydration still occurring? Dehydration is when your body is losing more fluids than you have been taking in. While it seems like a simple condition that anyone pretty much can understand it, it can be fatal, with many hospital admissions being attributed to it. Aside from not drinking enough water, other causes of dehydration include excessive water loss. Dehydration can occur due to the skin being burnt or through other skin diseases, through urine, through our digestive system, and through other diseases, one example being the inflammation to our pancreas. But it can also occur due to medications that you may be taking yourself. These include diuretics, water pills, and are usually given to people that have issues with the heart and also to the kidneys. Now you might think, okay, they're taking diuretics, so they're going to lose more water, therefore they need to take more water. But they actually need a fluid restriction and they need to take a very specific amount of water and follow to that or they risk something we call fluid overload. One common cause from this list is actually diarrhea and vomiting, not only killing by dehydration, but also by malnutrition, especially in children where clean water is not accessible. Keep this in mind because it will be important later. Unfortunately, the ugly truth of the matter is that while water is accessible, it does not always mean that it's actually safe to drink. The World Health Organization reports approximately 485 thousand diarrheal deaths per year and it does not help that at least two billion people globally drink from contaminated water and it's contaminated with the feces. In Brunei meanwhile, the Ministry of Health actually has uh, seen an increase in report of gastroenteritis cases back in early 21, which they have described it as an infection that is spread through food and drinks contaminated by pathogens causing gastroenteritis which can either be bacterial, viral, or protozoal in nature. 
So this would actually then classify the cause of the gastroenteritis as food poisoning, of which has been recorded for a very long time, such as Staphylococcus aureus poisoning and Salmonella poisoning. And if that weren't bad enough, dehydration can also cause you to lose nutrients from your body. Remember the part from before to keep in mind? One common cause from this list is actually the diarrhea and vomiting, not only killing by dehydration, but also by malnutrition. Your body is losing the sugars and salts needed to function alongside water. If you've heard of the words sodium, potassium, chloride, and so on, these are the so-called electrolytes that you usually come across whenever hydrating your body is being discussed and are all important in maintaining bodily functions from your brain to your heart. With sodium, the reason why diarrhea can cause such devastating effects with dehydration and sodium is that when diarrhea occurs in these cases, the intestines cannot actually absorb water back into the blood because sodium itself is not being absorbed. With 8 to 9 liters of water being normally reabsorbed in the small intestines, much of the water is lost as the sodium in our small intestines are also not being reabsorbed during diarrhea cases. Additionally, the sodium in the small intestines can also draw out more water from the blood, worsening the dehydration. So obviously, after all that, we cannot just look at water itself. So how do we manage this? We have to manage this by oral rehydration products. You may be familiar with the term ORS or oral rehydration salts and it is usually what is given to you at the pharmacy whenever you feel dehydration or are having diarrhea and vomiting. The WHO actually has approved a recipe for oral rehydrated salts and it has the following sodium chloride 2.6 grams potassium chloride 1.5 grams, sodium citrate 2.9 grams, and anhydrous glucose 13.5 grams. These oral rehydration salts are what you would usually see in pharmacies whenever you are given them. And as a fun fact, the glucose in the mixture actually helps in the reabsorption of water and sodium into your intestines, making the absorption of water far easier. To take this, you take 200 milliliters of boiled and cooled water and dissolve the salts in that water. I repeat, boiled and cooled water. Then you just drink it immediately or store in the refrigerator for up to a day. These products, while can rehydrate you, is still important to keep track of what is causing you to lose water. Because while it is important to refill fluids, it is also important to treat whatever is making you lose water in the first place. This is where, unfortunately, things just get trickier than just adding on a product. Other than diarrhea, having too much blood sugar, hormonal imbalances, or even an impaired sense of thirst are some possible reasons why you may have frequent dehydration bouts. Which brings us to the next and final point, prevention. Assuming there is clean water access for everyone, adults can actually avoid dehydration relatively easily. In fact, adults do not usually have dehydration outside of a condition. However, it is not as so with the elderly, and it is more so to do with that they have other risk factors such as simply forgetting or having many medications that increase the risk of dehydration, including the diuretics we have talked about, laxatives, and anticholinergic medications, which include some of the painkillers and antihistamine medications that help with nausea. Prevention really is just making sure that enough water is staying in the body, not just supplying enough water. Think of it as filling a water bucket. If it has a big hole that causes water to flow out, no amount of refilling is going to make up the lost water unless either the hole is fixed or the bucket that is replaced. Remember to drink plenty of water and take steps to avoid conditions that make you lose more water. An example being to make sure that the food and water you drink are prepared cleanly to avoid food poisoning. If you're taking a diuretic or any other medication and it is causing some dehydration, seek your doctor and discuss the issue so that changes can be made. 
With the days getting hotter, it is important that we stay hydrated. So if you feel a bit thirsty after all that, maybe it is time to have a drink of water. I hope that you can take something from this video and learn a little bit more about water in your body and also how to treat dehydration. Have you subscribed to the channel yet? If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. The channel offers updates on other medical issues and discusses other medical products as well. Hit the notification bell as well for new content.